Sir, welcome everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm going to be your host this evening. My name is Rosetta Samson. I'm part of the Young Investors Committee. Um, sorry, we have our presentation up, so I'm unable to share my camera, but I will do so later on. Um, so the topics that we will be discussing today is women in fintech, as well as the gender divide um, within the business sector. Um, I will pass on to our uh, lovely chairperson, Ms. Kanyezi Sikakne, and she will give you guys a breakdown of exactly what will be happening throughout the program. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for taking your time out, you know, to join us in this very important conversation that we're going to be having. Um, as it stands, we do have a waiting room. So if you are admitted into the waiting room, just make sure to tag our admin person and we'll make sure to take you out of that space. But it is 12 minutes past six. Um, we are heading into a very interesting conversation this evening. And of course, we've got our welcome screen here. So if you can see me, or if you can see my welcome screen, please just give me an indication via one of the Zoom reaction uh, notification buttons, and then we're good to go. Of course, we are discussing something very interesting today. We're getting into the grid of conquering the digital gender divide in FinTech. These are obviously very interesting um, topics. Both of them, you know, borrow from each other in a sense. We've got the digital gender divide, which is a prevalent issue um, in the African continent, specifically in the African continent. And then we've got the topic of fintech, which, you know, some of our specialists will head into. We will give you a notification that our keynote speaker is present and she is ready to address us. But of course, we need to um, set the stage and provide a little bit of context. I will ask you then to make sure that all of your mics are muted and that your cameras are off so that we can allow all of um, the streaming that's happening today to be streamless or, or to be without fault. I understand that when we do have our cameras on, it tends to disrupt the network. So please make sure your cameras and your mics are muted. And then we will get into the subject matter. So how it's going to work is that we're going to obviously define some of the key issues existing within both of these spaces. We're going to play um, a, a couple of videos just to give you a better understanding of the type of engagement that we're looking for towards the end of our keynote address. We will then have um, summary addresses from both of the societies that are working on this particular event today, which is, of course, the Young Investors Program under the School of Business and Finance. And we also have women in computer science from the natural sciences faculty. Um, they will tell you a little bit more about the graduate opportunities that are available in each of the spaces. And of course, some of the things that they do to advance your interests either in tech and computer science or in investing finance and business. So let's get right into it. So just to break down our agenda for today, we're going to do a small introduction where we outline some of the challenges that women face in general spaces. And then we'll get a little bit more specific about the spaces and the issues that women face within the finance industry. We will then outline the situation, which is the digital gender divide. We'll play a couple of graphics and give you brief definitions of each we'll get into FinTech for Women and Champions in each of these spaces. And then we'll have our keynote address from Nombu Melelo Somo, who will obviously outline her personal experiences in the space. She is a very well-versed woman who has a wealth of knowledge to share with us. And of course, we're excited to hear your engagement um, um, with her. So in the year of 2021, we had a percentage of about 45% of young Black women existing in the finance and investment space, saying that there hasn't been a transformation or a clear transformation, rather, of reformation policies as far as female representation is concerned in leadership spaces. We saw that there is a lack of general representation for women in the finance space, unspecific to race we saw that there is a lack of female focused leadership within the finance industry, which is very important. We saw that there is a lack of opportunities for growth in 2020 for young women in these spaces. And of course, we understand 
understand and we witnessed unfavorable business environments for women existing in the finance industry. We also then see that we experience inadequate support systems to assist women with issues that are specific to them within these particular industries. And of course, this is the reason that we've championed this conversation. This is the reason that we've created this event so that we can have experienced experts in the industry kind of outline the nature of these issues, resolutions to these issues, and how they have adapted to the particular issues and, and barriers within these particular spaces. We now go into the situation, which is the digital gender divide. I'm going to share my screen and play a graphic for you guys. It is about a two or three minute video, which really gives us the scope of the issue. And it also highlights a key campaign with a company called Plan International, which is actively solving this problem in the African continent. Let's take a look. Technology gives us opportunities to express ourselves. I think girls should uh, engage in technology because it's something good, something that can add value to their lives. If you do technology, you can, it can be easier to create your own job. Girls, we were minimized, as in we were always left behind. Only because we are not used to these things of technology. The reason as to why girls need technology because we all have the potential to do technology. I think we shall make the world a better place. As I understand it, um, has anyone been able to see this video? Was it visible and audible to everyone in the room? If uh, you can just send me a message, I see that um, We've had a bit of a technical issue with regards to my screen sharing. All right, great. I am receiving um, engagement with the video, so I will start it from scratch. I understand that, um, it, you know, I, I think there have been a few people who have not experienced um, the full feed. So I will restart the video and then we'll skip on to the next part of, of today's session. Technology gives us opportunities to express ourselves. I think girls should uh, engage in technology because it's something good, something that can add value to their lives. If you do technology, you can, it can be easier to create your own job. Girls, we were minimized, as in we were always left behind, only because we are not used to these things of technology. The reason as to why girls need technology, because we all have the potential to do technology. I think we shall make the world a better place. Right. So let's get into some specifics about this particular issue. You know, it's really important. Um, I don't know if everyone can still see my screen. Um, just give me a confirmation. All right. So it's really important for us to really get into.
you know, if, if just give me a confirmation if everyone can see and hear me. All right, thank you for that engagement. So we're getting into the situation of the digital gender divide. We need to make sure that we understand the statistic of the issue. The digital gender divide is basically a situation where there is an unequal amount of access to normal mobile and, 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 and a, a portable innovations for, between women and girls. It is the discrepancies that exist between females and males with regards to owning a mobile phone, with regards to the use of a cellular phone, with regards to mobile phones who or which have access to the internet. It is the discrepancy between the internet usage rate between girls and boys and so forth and so on. If you look here on this presentation, we've got 34 countries from the Afro barometer, which gives us an indication of these particular discrepancies that we have described before. But we need to kind of look into the facts of the situation. 6% of all women do not choose a career or choose a career in tech. And this number shrinks by 50% within the African continent. We've got women and girls which have a 60% less enrollment rate within the STEM subjects and pursuit of the STEM careers. And within Africa, only one out of seven women is likely to use the internet, whereas the figure for African men is about one out of every five. We have more than 60% of tech startups that have been founded by women in the African continent and outside, which do not have access to funding. These are all, or these are some of the outlined and specific issues that we experience within the tech space, these are issues that we experience within the African continent as far as the digital space is concerned. And of course, it is issues that we experience within the general business space. So how exactly can we bridge this digital gender divide through action? The first thing that we can do is to make sure that all data that we're collecting about men and women on the global population scale is disaggregated. This means that this information is specified it means that we give specifics as to whether we are dealing with a female or a male population and giving specifications under each of those types of women, where they are, the demographic, and so on and so forth. The second thing that we can do to bridge this divide through action is making sure that we have women in leadership, making sure that wherever we are in the corporate or the tech space, we've got women making sure that women's needs women's understanding, women's innovations and solutions are being represented on the board. We also need to make sure that we are creating gender responsive designs. And this is something that is specific to some of the new tech innovations that we've got coming out. Most of the specimens that are used within our fintech spaces or tech spaces in general are specimens that are generally male. There's a lot of adapting that needs to occur within our designs especially if we're designing things for women. We also need to make sure that we are adapting our social norms and cultures in tech spaces, making sure that we get rid of the bro culture when we get into offices or, or co-working spaces for young people in tech is important to incentivize women to join those spaces and so that digital innovation for women is represented well in these spaces. And the last thing that we could possibly do to bridge this divide is to make sure that we have equitable access to funding for all tech startups created by women. It is known that 60% of these startups are not funded and making sure that they are funded means that all of the innovations that women are, women are coming up with within the FinTech spaces are adequately represented. And so we kind of equalize the pain field within these particular spaces. The gender technology gap has also negatively impacted countries' potential for economic growth and development, especially those in less economic development countries. If 600 million more women are connected to the internet in the next three years from the year 2020, this would translate to a rise in the global GDP between US dollars of 13 billion and 18 billion dollars. So there are economic and financial benefits to making sure that women are adequately represented in the space. 
and are actively incentivized to join these particular spaces. Now we need to discuss what is next. What do we do to look ahead for growth and inclusion within these particular spaces? We've got about four minutes. If you've got any insights, if you've got any ideas, if you've got any particular comments with what we've shared, and if you are feeling inspired to kind of give your solution off of the top of your head, make sure to unmute your mic and let us know what you think. And then we will move to our keynote address starting at half past six with Ms. Nompumelelo Sopo. All right, it seems that our host uh, has probably been kicked out of the meeting or is experiencing technical difficulties. But what I will do is I will encourage you to think about some of the issues, you know, that we've brought to the table. I will encourage you to kind of think about your personal experiences um, in, in your job shadowing spaces, perhaps, or in your spaces at home where your fathers or mothers have started businesses and think about some of the particular challenges some of the particular culture um, blocks that you experience within these spaces, some of the difficulties that you've had with integrating into these spaces as a young woman. And keep this in mind as we head into our keynote address for this evening. So we will have um, a beautiful and powerful woman by the name of Nombumelelo Somo, who's going to share some of her experiences in her 20 year journey within the financial space. Uh, Ms. Nompumelelo, I'm going to stop, stop sharing my screen and I'm going to ask you to unmute your mic, um, display your camera and uh, please take the floor. All right, thank you so much for that, Nganyezi. I am, uh, I've unmuted, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, All right, we, we, let's get the camera going. All right. That is fantastic. Okay, can you see me? All right, yes. um, we can see you, we can hear you. Um, we are excited, you know, to, to, to have your engagement and you are officially under the spotlight. Everyone can see your screen and um, looking forward to, to your experience this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you to, uh, to Zizipo, to Ganyezi and Rizeda and everyone else in the team. My name is Nambumalelo, as it was said, and I'm truly honored to be here tonight. Um, what a privilege to have an opportunity to address you today. Um, what I'm going to share is gonna feel like a little bit of a detraction from where we are, um, but I've been asked to share with you my journey. What has been my journey over the 20 years in the financial services industry? And I encourage you to pay attention and see what you can grab from there and what you can apply um, into your life. So a short introduction. I have been in the financial services industry for over 20 years. I have worked with um, a couple of asset managers, um, 
in the area where I am, but I've been specifically in the information systems. You know, I've worked with one or two fintechs before, but mainly with asset managers. And those who know the SDLC, um, I've run the full gambit of it. You know, I've been a software developer, I've been a software tester, a business analyst, a test manager. Um, and at one point I was even a software uh, content trainer. I'm currently in, 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 in two roles at the moment. I'm a, software, I'm a service delivery manager. And basically that is the bridge between your clients um, and the information um, science uh, systems department. And I'm also a scrum master, those who are familiar with agile. So in short, I have a full-time job, but I also have a full-time passion. I am also the founder of Black Professionals Africa. It's an organization founded to help Black professionals navigate the workspace. You know, the challenges that are specific to Black professionals, those entering the workspace, those who have been there for a while, or those who are even transitioning. Um, and we need to create a safe space to discuss these challenges and help one another overcome them. So I hold a monthly masterclass to help Black professionals regain their identity, to inspire confidence and to increase, increase engagement and staying power in the corporate environment. You know, it's not just about being Black, it's about the fact that there are challenges that we face in the country and in the continent that can only be solved if the people that are sitting around the, the table making the decisions include the in entire demographic. If you look at the video that we just saw there, you see the people that are being left out. And so that's what Black Professionals is about, to say, how can we get people around the table who can bring solutions because they understand it's the problem? Um, at a personal level, mm -hmm. okay, is someone taking over or can I continue? Um, you can continue. Okay. Um, Okay. I will make sure to, to mute everyone's mic. Apologies for that. Oh, no, that's fine. I thought I had missed something. Okay, no problem. It happens. Don't worry about it. Okay, cool. On a personal level, um, I live in Cape Town. I'm a mother of four. Um, and I've recently taken up gardening as a hobby. I tend to stay indoors a lot, so gardening helps me go outside quite often. I've been asked, as I said, to share with you my journey. Um, and it's very difficult to share both my experience and the perspective that I gained through that experience in the short time that we have today together. So I've chosen a few principles and lessons that I learned along the way, and I'll try and rope in an experience that brings it together. So let me start off with this statement. What you do flows out of who you are. So decide who you want to be. You know, in a world where what you did do seems more important than who you are, I want to encourage you to turn the tables around. What kind of young professional do you want to be? What kind of entrepreneur do you want to be? What kind of female or male professional do you want to be? What kind of difference maker do you want to be? Because it is your values that determine the person that you are. So decide what matters to you. Is it integrity? Is it honesty? Is it uplifting people? Is it compassion? Is it making a difference? Is it impacting people? Because regardless of the business that you start, regardless of the job that you have, those things will come through. And there will always be countless number of things that we can choose from. Activities and opportunities never cease. You see the challenges that we face in the continent. So there will always be opportunities to make a difference. Um, there will be always be opportunities for us to do things. But you need something to ground you so that what you do flows from who you are. So let me share a few principles with you. Number one, choose to grow. Decide to grow in each season and each role that you find yourself in. You know, most times we look at the challenges we're facing and we think, oh, I can't wait for this to be over so that I can move on to the next phase. You know, it's like saying, I can't wait to be over with being a student, right? So that I have to deal, I don't have to deal with group work. Can I just burst your bubble? The real group work is coming. Right now, if you're a student, group work is about your marks, it's about your future. In the workplace, your group work will impact lives. It's called working in a team. So skipping steps and avoiding lessons now just makes life harder later on in life. Honor each season of your life and choose to learn the lessons that each season brings so that you can grow. 
let me rope in a, an experience. Um, the desire to grow has allowed me to take in roles that I would not have had the opportunity to um, had I not raised my hand. At the beginning, I said that I was a scrum master. I wouldn't have had that opportunity had when the company that I was working for decided that they were going to roll out Agile. If I hadn't said, hey, I would like to try that. Not too sure about it, but I'm willing to give it a try. So choose to grow. Number two, pay attention to detail. You know, everything in life has to do with details. Um, Ganyezi showed us right now that we have all these uh, statistics, but they're not disintegrated, right? I'm not sure if that's the right word, but basically you just have a number. You don't know how many of it is male, how many of it is female, how many of it is young adults, how many of it is grown up, how many of it is school going, right? Detail matters, right? It really does. Everything in life has to do with details from missing a zero on a balance sheet to putting in diesel in a car instead of petrol, to giving someone a few extra milligrams of morphine, to leaving the gate open behind you when there's a small child in the house. Detail matters. And one cannot make the assumption that the detail matters depending on where you are, whether you're in computer science or, or a FinTech or, or, or you're in medicine. But from the examples that I've given you, you can see that detail matters all around. But this doesn't mean that now we must live out highly strung out lives and we're always checking on ourselves um, to make sure that we pay attention. So how do we do that? By being fully present in the moment. If you learn to be fully present in the moment, then the detail will take care of itself. You know, multitasking is overrated. Focus on the task at hand. Honor it by being fully present. Let me give you an example from my experience as well. We once had an issue where our service went down. It affected our company, hundreds of people. It affected our clients. You can multiply that number. Um, and for hours, and a number of hours that I, I'm not allowed to disclose, all because somebody plugged in the incorrect electrical cable. So detail matters. Number three, don't try too hard to create your career path. You know, one of the things that people are asked to do is to have a two-year plan, a three-year plan, a five-year plan. And I think that's very important. That's great. Like we need to have a vision for the future. We need to have dreams. We need to know what we're working towards. But I understand that your plan right now is based on what you know. And no matter how much information you have, your planning is based on limited knowledge. Real knowledge is experiential. Most of our plans look good on paper but they taste different when you live them out. So be open to change. Don't try too hard to stick to your career path, else you'll miss out on a great life. Not everybody who came to, I think we've got some UW students here, not everybody who came to UWC to study is studying what they thought they would when they arrived. Some of you will graduate and want nothing to do with what you studied. And I'm not kidding, trust me, I'm living that right now. My daughter completed an architecture degree at the end of last year. Yeah, I know, I'm that old, yeah. But she completed her, her architecture degree at, at the end of last year and she wanted nothing to do with it. Mind you, this is a course she chose. We didn't choose that for her, right? So who you are and who you want to be, it changes as you grow and you learn new things and you interact with more people. And that's okay. Don't be so rigid with your five-year plan that you're afraid to get off the beaten track. Some of the most amazing views and most amazing experiences that I've had were when I got off the beaten track. Let me give you an example from my experience again. At one stage of my career, the team that I was in got dissolved and I had to join another team um, that had different technology that I was well-versed in. And I had to start from the bottom again. I could have said no because other people in the team also said no, but I decided to move and join a new team. And in that team, I grew. In that team, I was able to travel. That team, I was able to learn a part of the business. I actually ended up looking after three clients for the business because I wasn't afraid to get off the beaten track. And number four, look after your reputation. You know, the social currency that we have is our reputation. You could be the best at anything, but if you have a bad reputation, then no one will want to work with you. Your reputation is what gets you your job when you're on par with other candidates. It's what helps you keep your job when your company is downsizing. 
Your reputation is what keeps bringing customers back to you for your products and for your services, for those who want to start a business or are already in the business arena. Your reputation is your social currency. And this is why we have the phrase, you know, her reputation precedes her. Who you are speaks for you even before you open your mouth. That's a reputation. Um, Dwight L. Moody says, if I take care of my character, my reputation will take care of me. It all comes back to your values. Your character is your lived out values. Let me give you another example. Um, in one of the companies that I was working for, there was an employee who cost the company 500,000. They owned up and they kept the job. And another employee cost the company 25,000, hid the mistake, was found out and lost the job, right? 500K, 25K, integrity, character, reputation. So to summarize, number one, choose to grow. Two, pay attention to detail. Three, don't try too hard to create your current career path. And number four, look after your reputation. Now, as I conclude, um, I don't think it would be right for me to finish this off without paying homage to, to this month, to Women's Month. And I wanna tell you a story. Um, it's a story about the power of women. Um, it's a story about the power of one woman. And it's also the story of the power of the collective of women. Back in the 1800s, the British were trying to take over the Ashanti Empire, um, what we now know as Ghana, and it ex exiled the Ashanti king and some of the leaders. The British thought that it would be easier to take over the country after they had done that. They thought it would be easier, but they hadn't banked on one woman. Whilst the remaining elders were having one deliberation after another deliberation, how do we respond to this British threat? What do we do? And they couldn't reach consensus on how to respond. And the Queen Mother rose up and she took a stand. Her name was Queen Ia Asandewa. She rallied around 5,000 men and women to war against the British. The purpose of the story is to, to remind us that women play a pivotal role in society and they're willing to rise to the challenge. They're willing to rise to the occasion. I don't know how curated that video was that we saw, but it was women who were saying, hey, we've been left out of progress because of technology. We've been left out because we're not there. But it's not, it's not from a lack of willingness. They want to be there. They want to take part in the economy. And so when the situation calls for it and what you care about is at stake, you too will rise to the occasion. But secondly, that as a woman, you'll find yourself in a role that is traditionally being seen as only for men. And when the situation calls for it, and it will call for it, for you as a woman who has the solution that could impact many lives to rise up and to make a difference, or maybe to impact one life, right? One life actually matters. If you want to look at it from another angle, think of one life as yours. Then you realize that actually one life matters. So for the women that are here, you will be faced with these challenges, but you can overcome them. But here's the thing, you can't do it alone. You need others around you. As I, as I really get to the end of, of my address today, um, I want to share another experience with you. Every pivotal job that I have had, and I have many, um, was due to having a woman by my side. Now that might sound a bit cliche, but that's literally my journey, right? From the first job that I had to the one that I'm in right now, it's been women sharing their opportunities, advocating for me, believing in me when I was down and out. And they're my tribe. And guess what? You have your tribe too. Whether you found them or not, you have your tribe too. And as Queen Ya Asendewa rose to the occasion, and I believe that there are many women who want to rise to the occasion. There are many women who want to start businesses and they need to be integrated into that through technology. Someone needs to rise to the occasion and say, hey, can I put a cell phone? Can I put a mobile phone in every woman and girl in the continent? Someone needs to rise to that occasion. And I believe that part of that courage that Queen Ya had was knowing that she had other women backing her. Oh man, you should see one of her photos, man. This woman in the 1800s in her battle regalia, flanked by women around her. And as much as um, um, 
so much can be done, excuse me, so much can be done when women band together and choose to make a difference. You know, for some of you that might sound a little bit far-fetched, I was like that as well, right? But they say that we, even though we hurt in relationships, we also heal in relationships. You know, at some point I had to let go of my own baggage and make sure that that baggage doesn't determine my future. At some point I had to open up to the possibility of meeting other incredible women. And because of that, I found my tribe. And I believe that there are other women who want to do great things and do it together with you. So be an amazing period. <laughs> this is what happened. I wanted to say, so be an amazing person, period. Every single time I rehearsed this address, I promise you, I kept saying, be an amazing period. And I thought, wouldn't that be great to have an amazing period? But let's move on. Be an amazing person, full stop. Be an amazing woman. Be the person who can be counted on and you will find your, your, your tribe. One of my friends quit her job as, ge as a geologist so that she could do microfinance because she says, I want to be that woman that makes a difference. I want to be that woman who decides where funds go. Are you going to uplift people? Are you going to uplift women? Are we going to build schools? What are we going to do? Are we going to make sure that the majority of people in the continent get to be included in the technology space so that our economy is inclusive? And I know that as women, we can work together. We can back one another. We can promote one another because I'm experiencing that. So that our dreams of the progress, of the advancement, guys, there's innovation that no one has seen and it's sitting with you. It's sitting with you. And that dream can become a reality. We can put a cell phone in every girl and every woman in the continent. We can put a computer in every community. We can make sure that we are connected. Some of you have had to hold a job as you studied. Some of you have had to leave a little one at home. Some of you don't even know that the other person is a little one at home. Some of you had to take loans or your parents had to take loans. Great sacrifices have been made to get you here by you and by other people. So let's make it count and let's make it count together. I wanna to leave you with an African proverb. And it says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. I thank you. Her name is Nompu Melelo Somo, Service Delivery Manager, Scrum Master, and founder of the Black Professionals Africa. It was definitely an engaging and inspiring um, um, experience and journey that you've shared with us, Ms. Nompu Melelo. And we're going to skip to questions in just a few minutes. But I really, really want to thank you for the level of inspiration that you've given to our young woman here today. I really think that the key takeaway from what you are saying is that we should champion our innovations. We should make sure that we are consistent and persistent in our efforts to penetrate and make space or take up space in both industries. And we need to make sure that we are doing it together because we want to go far all women, always. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Um, Numpumelelo. And I know that the students, you know, have really given a lot of, of, of feedback as far as this presentation is concerned. We're so thankful to have a powerful um, black woman um, here representing professionals in the IT space and in the business space as well. And we will always look to you for insight. We will always follow you on your pages just to make sure that our life is aligned with the beauty and the success that, that yours um, represents. She is as an experienced IT professional. She's demonstrated a history of working in the investment management industry. She is skilled in agile testing, agile methods, test management. She is a strong quality assurance professional. She's experienced in working with integrated teams and project and service delivery for clients. And she's also passionate about uplifting people just like she has uplifted our young woman today. Now, before we skip into questions and answers, we would like to make sure that, you know, we are giving you an understanding of what these two societies are that have come together to create this experience for you today. And so I'm going to ask Nonche Maseko from Women in Computer Science to unmute her mic while I share my screen and to give you a brief summary of what we does and what it could potentially do for you today. Good evening, everyone. 
I'm just going to talk about what Weeks is up. Oh, sorry. What Weeks is about its mission and opportunities that are there when you join the Women in Computer Science computers in Computer Science Society. So, Women in Computer Science UTRC is a society focused at encouraging women to pursue a, a career in computer science up to a higher level. So Wix is mainly aimed at female and female identifying persons, but it's also open to everyone. Um, our mission is to encourage women to become more active in computer science. Um, more overview of Wix, mentoring younger students, particularly women is not only challenging, but inspiring. Um, being a woman in computer science, in a heavily male dominated field is often challenging. It is not unusual for a woman to find herself undermined by her classmates just because she doesn't fit the stereotypical computer science mode. Um, in conversation with some female uh, students in computer science, one often finds that they have had a journey of nearly quitting computer science. This was nearly always preempted by having spoken with other women, students or lecturers who encouraged them to continue and reassured them that they were in fact capable of pursuing computer science. Um, this begs the question, how many female students will have continued, continued and pursued a degree in computer science? Had there been some form of intervention in form of encouragement and mentoring available? In response to this, um, Women in Computer Science was initiated and launched by a female lecturer in computer science at, Uta, at UWC, Dr. Issa Fiyali, with the aim of gathering the women in the Department of Computer Science at UWC to encourage uh, conversations, support, mentorship, and ultimately to aid in increasing the female population of the department and by extension, the global spectrum. So some of the activities that WIGS does, so WIGS aims to fulfill its goals by initiating four sub-programs, sub but we, re we recently added one, which is socials, where informal gathering of computer science women um, gather and where you get to meet alumni, lecturers, postgraduate and undergraduate students and just socialize informally. And also have formal talks. These talks focus on work done by women, but in research and industry. So the purpose of these talks is to expose students to the different opportunities that computer science offers. And also have mentoring program where senior students are assigned as mentors to junior students the mentor serves as a support system and encourage these mentees. Uh, we also have outreach programs, but we haven't been able to do this project, I mean, this program during the lockdown and during the, the, the COVID pandemic. And we also have hackathons, which we might do this year with Amazon. And then opportunities that we have. The WIC Society has recently partnered with Amazon Web Services, where recruiters from Amazon come and host tech sessions where they advise and share opportunities that are available at their company. The last session we had was a CV and interview skills session where students had the chance to learn uh, about writing a winning CV and how they interview at their company at Amazon. So we still have more sessions to host with Amazon where Amazon engineers will have um, tech tech talks with the students and give an overview of the industry from AI, FinTech and more. Um, when the time comes for such sessions, we usually send emails to computer science and information system students as a whole, and also via our social media platforms. So if you are students in computer science and information systems, especially undergrad, you usually get our emails from the women in computer science when we have events. So in conclusion, we hope that by initiating the the Women in Computer Science program, more women will be encouraged to pursue the field of study, this field of study, I mean, the computer science uh, degree. We hope that through this, Wix will play a part in helping to change the demographics of the computer science department at UWC and beyond. Um, thank you. 
And um, a thank you to you, Nontle Maseko, from Women in Computer Science. Um, please make sure to share with you know the the young individuals in the audience um, a method of being able to join Women in Computer Science. I know that there are quite a few students um, in the Young Investors Program who are doing information systems, and I see an opportunity for them to enlarge their interest in the Women in Computer Science space. So thank you for that, and thank you to Women in Computer Science for making this event possible today. I will then open up the floor um, and ask Rosetta to chair this part of the program. We really want to get into the questions that you have for either the Young Investors Program for Women in Computer Science or for our keynote address, Ms. Nompume Losomo. We'd also like to, you know, indicate to you that unfortunately the two of our speakers who were supposed to be in part with Nompume Losomo were unfortunately unable to attend today's event. And so we've had to improvise and adapt like we always do because that's what women you know are, are, are really good at doing um and so let's open up the floor for the next few minutes any questions that you'd like to find out from Nompumelelo or the two organizations today are more than welcome and um we're looking forward to your engagement um so thank you so much kanezi for that as well as nonchle and miss Nompulelo. So I've got a question for Ms. Nompulero. So I noticed you focused a lot on like grounding yourself, you know, and finding your inner uh, peace or your inner self. So the question that I have for you tonight is like, what would you say is a must-have skill in the job market today in your experience? All right, thanks for that question, Griseida. Um, Is it specific to any industry or is that in general? Because that will also inform my response. So just in general, overall, like what would you say is a must-have skill? And then I'm gonna ask a follow-up question. Um, a, as in a hard skill, like a computer skill or a soft skill, for example, what we call soft skill, they're not soft at all. Um, for example, resilience. I'm um, just making sure I understand your question correctly. So just an overall, uh, just an overall experience, what it is like to focus on yourself and what skill would be and a base skill to have in today's job market. Look, I, I would definitely say resilience. Um, that's what comes to mind. You need resilience because when you come out of um, studying and you start applying for jobs, um, you, you'll face more rejections than yes. Unfortunately, that's the reality of it. And so you'll need resilience. Even when you get into a job, um, regardless of what you have studied, you're gonna have to learn certain things from scratch and you're gonna need resilience. When you're faced with challenges, you're gonna need resilience. Um, when you have to, for example, relocate, um, maybe keep the same job or change jobs, you're gonna need resilience. Um, and so, I think that resilience for me is one of those, those skills, those um, skills that are invaluable. If you look at um, scientists and researchers, people are able to come up with innovation, people are able to come up with discoveries because of resilience. If you look at startups, um, uh, they need resilience. If you look at entrepreneurs, they need resilience. If you look at asset managers, if you look at a fund, you're gonna to have to be resilient and not disinvest, you know, just because the market looks dicey. So I, I, I can't find a place um, where you don't need resilience. So I would say for me, that is the one skill that you need regardless of where you are. Thank uh, you so much. Okay. Yes, thank you so much for that. So if anyone else has any other questions, you guys can just pop it in our chat box and I will read it out. Or if you guys want to raise your voice, you can just unmute yourself and ask the question. So before I uh, finish my side, this, this is the last question I have for you from my end. So if um, you could give your younger self advice uh, mm -hmm. on your career, what would it be? Um, it's going to sound so tacky, but be yourself. Oh, I held back on so much of who I am and who I want to be um, because I thought that I had to fit a specific box. Um, and it's kind of difficult when you don't even know what that box is or it keeps moving. 
So if I could give myself advice, I would say, be yourself. You know, I have dance parties in my bedroom and for some of you, it's like, okay, we do that all the time, but I couldn't even do that. Um, I speak up and I challenge people at work over the last couple of years and before I couldn't do that because I didn't think um, that that was allowed. So I think if I could give myself and this, this is the advice that I give to my kids is genuinely to be yourself because when you are yourself, you get to th see the things that you're strong in. You get to see the things that you like about yourself. You get to see the things that you're like, mm, that really doesn't look good on a human being. I need to change that. Um, and so I would say, if you are yourself, um, then you actually get to live the life that you want, right? Because all these things come up, the good and the bad, and then you can work on the not so good um, and you can hold on to the really good stuff. Um, and so when I decided to give myself freedom to be myself, I realized, hey, it's okay to be hardworking. It's okay to be proactive. It's okay to have attention to detail. It's okay to love people. I'm a mama bear at work. Everybody knows they can come to me. Right. And when I allowed myself that I found freedom, uh, but I also got to see that, you know, being a mama bear sometimes it means you meddle in people's business. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. So if I could give myself uh, my younger self advice, it would be to just be yourself. Everything else comes out to when you are yourself and you get to keep the good and you have an opportunity to, to change and work on the not so good. Thank you so much, Ms. Numpulelo. Thank you so much for that insightful journey. Um, if anyone has, else has questions, you guys can just unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, there is a question from Richardson Shambare. Is that for me, Richardson? Yes, okay. It says, may you also explain, okay. May you also explain a bit about being yourself, especially for women of color, when the world seems to be against their views, personality and identity. Oh my goodness, how much time do we have? Okay, um, yeah, very difficult. I have found myself in boardrooms where I am the only female. I found myself in boardrooms where I'm not the only female, but I'm only, the only black person. Now, back in the day, that used to be a card. You'd be like, yeah, I'm the only black. You don't want to be the only black person. You want to be able to break through that door, get in and leave it open for other people to come in. So um, a little bit about it. It has been difficult, um, but I think it's when I slowly started to give myself the freedom to be myself that I realized that I am needed in that room, that my opinions are needed in that room, that my background is needed in that room. Um, I said in my address earlier on that there are problems that are still not being solved because we have the wrong people sitting in those decision-making tables. And so as I allowed myself as a woman of color, guys, there used to be people who had problems with my dreadlocks. For you guys, youngsters, it sounds weird, but people had issues with it, S silly things like those. But when you then decide, okay, I know that I'm good. I know that I have something to bring here to the table and you focus on your work and you decide, okay, I'm not going to fight that. I'm just going to prove that I'm a human being. I'm good at what I do and I deserve to be here. And the fact that I have dreadlocks and I have got, you know, whatever it is that people don't like about me falls by the wayside. And I, I feel that um, there are battles to be won, but I also feel that we also need to be careful that we are fighting the right battles. If you have been given an opportunity to be in a space, be darn good at it. Be very good at it. Decide that I'm going to make an impact. Whether I'm here for six years or six months, I'm going to make an impact. And so that then allowed me to be comfortable in my own skin. There are times where I would walk out of a meeting, I would walk out of a room and somebody would say, did you realize you were the only, whatever, you were the only white person. Oh, white person. <laughs> you were the only black person. You were the only person in the train looks or you were the only female. And I didn't even realize that anymore because those things don't matter to me anymore. It's about, I am here, I'm here to make a difference. And then after a while, then yes, I can go like, wait a minute. 
I've been in this meeting six times and I'm the only one here. How do we bring someone else in? But we, got, we, we, need, to, we need to fight the right fight, which is to say, I'm here pretty good at what I'm doing and I'm making a difference and I'm here to stay. And then you leave that door open for the next person. Um, yes, and, and our, our last question is um, from Ulilita. Um, and she wants to know what exactly is it that keeps you motivated? And I, I want to piggyback on that question because I know that you've been in the industry for so long. I know that you've started great initiatives and it takes a lot of energy and um, and force and commitment to something, you know, to, to, to stay in those spaces and succeed in them like you have. So, you know, from, from two, two young girls, um, we really want to know what keeps you motivated. Um, I think everyone expects to be one, to, to be one grand answer to what keeps you motivated. What keeps me motivated right now um, is one, living a legacy. Right. I've decided that I'm not going to look back when I'm 60 to go like, oh, what did I do? Um, when I entered my late 30s, I thought, I thought um, what kind of legacy do I want to live, to leave, right? And to live. Hmm, nice one. What kind of legacy do I want to leave, right? And then I started working towards that. But 10 years ago, that wasn't what kept me motivated. 10 years ago when I was in my 30s, yes, that's how old I am. Um, what kept me motivated was being good at what I do, right? 10 years before that, when I finished varsity and I started um, working, my motivation then was, who am I? Can I, can, I, can I do certain things? Can I try certain things to figure out who I am? So what keeps you motivated evolves. Right now, what keeps you motivated is like, heck, can I just get 50% on that? Just that one, if I get 50%, the others I know they're fine. And it's okay for that to keep you motivated. Let it motivate you. Let it allow you to finish. Remember what we said about choose to grow in each season of your life? Let that motivate you to finish and to complete that phase of your life. And when you move into the next phase, something else might motivate you. We are such complex human beings. We grow and we evolve. It doesn't make sense for us to have only one thing that motivates us. So allow those different things to motivate you. Because when you allow them, for someone like me, I look back and Ganyeza says to me, <laughs> I just want to earn 50k minimum. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look down on you and go like you need to have a purpose. You need to be willing to uplift people. You need to lay your life down for black professionals. I'm not gonna expect that from you. I'm gonna understand that because when I was 20, I just got married and I had two kids, and I just started working. I needed to put food on the table right? And so what motivates you evolves as you grow, as you learn, as you focus on different things in your life. So look to where you are and look to what you're willing to do and let that motivate you to say, I'm going to be pretty good at being a student. I'm going to be pretty good at being an intern. I'm going to be pretty good at being a mother or whatever it is that you are and let that motivate you. I hope that answers your question. It definitely does. Um, and thank you for that um, engagement, Ms. Nompumelelo, and thank you to, you know, all of our students and, and, and individuals in the audience for, you know, for the engagement and the questions that you've sent. I know that, you know, it makes everything a little bit more clear, and we really hope that, you know, today's session has opened up your eyes um, and helped you understand the dynamics of the industry and the dynamics of what it means to be a woman in our our time, especially a young professional woman. So what are some of the key takeaways that we take away from today's session? Number one, we need more representation in the digital space. We need to move from 0% to 15% in less economic developed countries by the year 2030. We need to make sure that wherever we go, in whatever space that we're in, we need to make sure that we are changing the culture so that we can change the environment and encourage more women to come into these spaces. We need to make sure that there is an increased percentage of women in leadership in tech spaces in finance spaces and in every other space that you find women in. And we need to increase the access to basic tech. We need to increase the teaching of financial literacy to women and girls and allow them to innovate solutions that exist within both of these spaces through the use of fintech. 
We definitely hope that today's session has motivated you and encouraged you. It is brought to you by the Young Investors Program as well as Women in Computer Science. You can get in touch with us at 083-786-0652 and you can email us at younginvestors-sbf at uwc.ac.za. We really hope that this session has inspired you and motivated you to be a great, brilliant and damn good young professional wherever it is that you go because you are a very powerful woman. And um, that brings our session to a close. Thank you, everyone.